Welcome to Connections with BCD Travel, an ongoing conversation about the modern day travel program, the impact of technology, and how travel buyers can take control and drive change. What are we waiting for? Let's start connecting. Welcome back to Connections with BCD Travel. I'm Chad Lemon, and I work in digital strategy and advancement at BCD, and I'm one of your hosts. And I'm Maria Moscovich. I lead our research and intelligence team at BCD Travel. You've heard me say it before, but we love hearing from you. So please go to bcdtravel.com slash podcast to send us some feedback and connect with us. Okay, on this episode's Quick 60 in Business Travel, I wanted to ask you about the corporate travel policy. I heard the team has some new research coming out later this week. What's that all about? So we have just uh, completed a set of research on corporate travel policies. Uh, We've done uh, surveys with our travel buyers and also a large group of business travelers around the world. We've asked them what they think about corporate travel policies. So we're covering things like what's in a corporate travel policy and also what's not in a corporate travel policy. Also important, um, yeah. Yeah, and um, and what do business travelers really want in their corporate travel policy? Spoiler alert, it's mostly about upgrades and first class <laughs> and <Shopping>. <laughs> <laughs> things like that. Uh, and um, it seems to be really an important piece of the overall body of research we provide. Um, one of the things that we learned uh, in the survey with our travel buyers is that uh, the vast majority of the corporate travel programs we deal with or in that we're represented in the survey have changed their travel policy in the last 18 months. And they have plans to change their travel policy over the next 18 months. So the corporate travel policy is really fluid. Uh, It's really dynamic. It responds to what's going on in your environment and in the business world and maybe even in your industry or in your traveling community. So uh, it's really interesting to see some of the results and they should be out ready to the public uh, by later this week. Uh, Well, if you'd like to know more, check out some of the great content that Miriam's team publishes on the BCD Travel website. I can't believe it's already June and we're at the halfway point of 2024, Chad. Uh, Mm -hmm. But June is also International Pride Month. So on today's episode, we're celebrating by connecting with two BCD colleagues about ensuring that not only safety for LGBTQ plus travelers, but also some things you might not be thinking about concerning this group. Uh, On this episode, we're delighted to have Christine Connolly, Senior Manager with our Global Crisis Management Team, and Patrick Pickens, VP of Global Sales. And I know both have a unique perspective on this topic, as well as some great tidbits of info. So let's do it. Um, I know that I just introduced you both, but I'd love for you all to just quickly tell our listeners a little bit about your perspective and experience and expertise in this area. Christine, why don't you start? Hi, I'm Christine Conley. I am, as Chad said, a uh, senior global crisis manager with BCD Travel, but also a travel risk management consultant with our consulting branch at Vito. I'm a member of the GBTA Risk Committee and a voting member of the ISO Technical Advisory Group on Risk Management. So the group that convenes and writes uh, ISO standards like ISO 31030 on risk management. Um, Hi, everyone. My name is Patrick Pickens. Uh, I am Vice President of Global Sales at BCD Travel. And this is a topic that is not only deeply personal to me, but also one that I have on a routine basis with a lot of uh, corporate travel managers In my role, um, I interact with a lot of corporate travel managers on topics from anywhere from sustainability to accessibility to minority groups like the LGBTQAI plus community. And um, it's something that is of growing importance uh, to make sure that not only are certain travelers taken care of, but every traveler is taken care of and creating that really inclusive environment for all your travelers. And then the second piece of it is, is it's deeply personal to me. I'm a member of the LGBTQIA plus community. And there's a lot of stuff that I, you know, think about when I travel that corporate travel managers probably aren't very aware that I'm thinking about. And I know that the questions that I'm asking myself are things that other members of the community also are. So really excited to be here and uh, continue the conversation. You know, a few episodes, we did a woman in business travel episode, and it was important for me to stress at the time that we need a kind of a cultural shift away from kind of carrying a whistle um, to more keeping your hands to yourself. And, you know, there's many ways to interpret that. Um, But I think the same mentality applies here. So, Christine, 
The theme of this episode is protecting the LGBTQIA plus community and business travel. So what is your team seeing concerning this? And, um, and what can you share with us? Well, I would say that I think it's, it's part of a larger, <clears throat> excuse me, a larger global shift and awareness about diversity, right? Um, and I think after 2020, that came to the fore, and now we are seeing somewhat of less of a focus on it. So they think we did diversity, it's over, we can move on. But, uh, you know, and in fact, there was a, um, some research published last week from BTN News Europe, a survey that said 141 different organizations, of all of them, only 27% had any considerations for LGBTQ plus travelers. So that's simply not enough. Um, we would like to see, and, and that research shows that other uh, minoritized communities and groups were also not receiving the care that they needed and the considerations that they needed. So um, it, it's part of a global shift, but it, it definitely needs to be a priority. We all have a diverse workforce and that the needs of that diverse work, workforce needs to be considered by an employer, and particularly when they're in a different environment and travel is that different environment. And Patrick, I'm sure you've got a view on this too. I mean, as we're seeing across the board in the travel industry, diversity, equity, and inclusion being such a uh, important topic and the LGBTQIA plus community is such an important part of any traveler program, whether they're out travelers or closeted travelers. And it needs to be uh, really important in the cor corporate travel space that those considerations are made uh, as anyone is looking at their travel policy and or unique travel travelers within their program. And I think it's also really important anytime we like talk about like, you know, security warnings that the Department of State are issuing or the FBI, et cetera. I also think it's really important to kind of look at the opposite side of things. Uh, there's a lot of really great things happening around the world for the LGBTQIA plus community. There's amazing pride celebrations, which is a great time for the community to come together, feel comfortable in their own shoes and really celebrate who they are as well as, you know, more local gatherings, either at bars, restaurants, or, you know, libraries, you name it. Uh, there's always a safe space uh, for the community to come together. And it's not just the community, it's allies, which allies are a huge part of the community it itself as well. Christine, when we were talking about this episode, you mentioned something that I really identified with, and that's the concept of embracing the fact that you're kind of in control of your own safety sometimes and duty of loyalty. Can you talk a little bit more about duty of care versus duty of loyalty? What, is, what does that mean? Um, yeah, so duty of care, we're all familiar with duty of care, right? So the organization organization's legal responsibility, but also moral obligation to ensure that their workforce is safe. The duty of loyalty is the employee's duty. So if you're receiving travel alerts, if you're receiving destination information, read it, make sure you take that the recommendations and put it into practice for your trip. Um, it's also when you're traveling, always acting in the best interest of your employer. So not um, putting yourself in dangerous situations, not paragliding, for instance, if we're talking about extreme risk or, um, uh, you, you know, doing anything that's extremely risky that can put uh, yourself or your employer in, uh, in danger. Christine, there is a balance, though, between um, a personal responsibility of a traveler or their traveling companions and the corporation, right? It's not just the sole responsibility of the traveler. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, if the company doesn't provide that information for them or a resource for them, um, then, then the, the employees out on their own and they have, you know, nothing to go on. So it's really, a, 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 it's, um, a careful balance between the two. You know, Patrick, I wanted to touch on something you just mentioned around um, kind of disclosure, right? We we hear of employees not feeling comfortable expressing their concerns to their employers or their travel managers. And so we have the issue of disclosure coming up, right? On the one hand, we've got maybe travelers not wanting to disclose. On the other hand, we've got travel programs and corporations who aren't actually keeping a list or tracking your sexual orientation um, to proactively provide assistance. So What's your experience here? How do we overcome this challenge? Sure. I, again, I think it comes back to culture. I, and, and I think it's really important to note that I think anyone that's part of the LGBTQIA plus community, their coming out story is something that they own. It's something deeply personal, and I believe it should be on their terms. And there's a lot of travelers that 
are not out in the workplace or don't feel comfortable having that conversation, you know, with their employer. So I think it always needs to be a, a balance of just creating that open dialogue between management, leadership, and it kind of goes even beyond that one-on-one personality. It needs to be in the policies. It needs to be, you know, if a traveler comes to you and says, hey, like, I don't feel comfortable traveling to XYZ location, maybe it's within the culture. Maybe it's don't question that and maybe just understand that there's an underlying reason. I mean, I can tell you like a little bit vulnerable, like even doing this podcast there's an element of me that like Wade, like I have customers that may not, they may not be really comfortable with me being an out member of the community. And that's something that, you know, everything that I do for work, I'm constantly accessing, like, is this going to impact the customers that I'm working with? Is it going to change the way they, you know, they view me? And some com- some, you know, members of the community may be a lot more comfortable and just you know, I don't care what anyone thinks. And that's kind of more on the spectrum that, that I sit on. But there's a lot that are constantly weighing uh, decisions on their part. And it's a, it's a, it oftentimes can be very challenging. Uh, one thing I was going to add that I think is also super important is no matter who your employer is, if they're part of the community or another community, it doesn't really matter. The best employee that you will ever have is the one that is authentic to themselves every single time. And the the better you can help individuals just feel comfortable in themselves, the better work you're going to get out of that employee, the more motivated they're going to be. And let's be real, no matter who you are, you want to feel comfortable in your own skin. Absolutely. All such great points. Wow. That was, that was really impactful. Um, Christine, let's talk a little bit about this from your area of expertise, risk management. Um, As far as information goes, you know, I heard you say, make sure information is available. It's already out there. You don't have to ask for it. Um, What do you suggest for all the travel managers listening right now? Things they should be doing, things they might not be thinking about, just that holistic information approach. What do you suggest? So it kind of goes back to what Patrick was saying about, you know, um, the, the corporate culture. You have to create a corporate culture where safety is an organizational priority, and that extends down to the travel program. And creating an environment where your employees feel respected and seen, they're going to feel much more comfortable coming to you with issues uh, about their safety, issues of identity. And, you know, that includes members of the LGBTQ plus community. They may not be out at work. No matter how great your corporate culture is, there will always be employees who who choose not to disclose. So that is why it's so critical to have that information for them. And that can include, you know, a general tr- generic travel security training, which I would recommend for all employees, but also specialized training that, you know, are targeted directly to LGBTQ plus, um, directed to other minoritized groups uh, in your workforce. Um, but then also based on the destination, having that destination based information available as well. So if you have a traveler, an LGBTQ traveler going to, let's say Uganda, which last year instituted some of the harshest anti-gay legislation that uh, includes punishment up to death. You want your employee to know that that is a risk that they face if they're traveling there and what they need to do and what they need to not do while they're there. And some of those recommendations may include things like, um, traveling with clean technology. So a mobile phone that's swiped of your normal apps, which may include like dating apps, for instance. Um, if that's taken from you, that immediately identifies you and uh, and could put you at high risk. Um, other things are just, you know, things that I would recommend for generics, traveler safety, right? If you're in an area and you don't feel safe, don't walk home. If you're in an area, you feel that a taxi is not going to be the right choice for you, get an Uber. And that also goes back to that corporate that corporate safety culture that's saying, I have I'm empowered to take this Uber. I'm empowered to get a hotel that's in a safer part of town and knowing that it's not going to be an issue when you're reimbursing that back to the back to the uh, company. Christine, I want to talk for a few minutes about non LGBTQIA plus colleagues. I travel all the time. Um, I often travel with gay colleagues and I hadn't, until we talked about this, hadn't really thought about how my behavior 
might need to change towards them in public, depending on where we're at. And so I just thought it'd be worth bringing that up and talking a little bit about how allies can behave um, in ensuring the safety of our colleagues. Yeah. And that's a super important point because, you know, we used to say, you know, just have regular traveler security traveler security training, and that's sufficient. And LGBTQ training can be a separate component that they can just access. Um, but it's actually training that that I believe all employees should have. And we, I can trace this back to an incident that occurred where two travelers that were in Dubai get into a car service, and they are colleagues and friends, and one is a um, out member of the LGBTQ plus community. And they're just having a regular conversation about their families. And the uh, one guy turns to the uh, LGBTQ plus member and says to him, how's your husband? Which if they were in their home country, that wouldn't have been an issue. But in Dubai, having that conversation in front of the driver put, puts that person at legal risk and says to him, had now puts that member it needs to know He could be arrested later. He could be surveilled later. There's all these consequences that now flow down from that conversation in front of a driver in a location where homosexuality is illegal and can be punishable by jail time in some places and up to death in other places. So that calculation is much different in in these different locations. And all members of your uh, staff need to be aware of that. So you're not endangering your fellow employee. Um, I want to ask both of you about what's available today to help LGBTQI plus travelers as far as technology goes. You know, on this podcast, we typically focus on the technology aspect of travel. Um, Any suggestions or thoughts on what you see out in the markets right now that could be helpful for this topic? Christine, why don't you start? Yeah, I would suggest, first of all, partnering with third-party assistance providers. And this is really where BCT Marketplace can come in. Um, Because we we have a lot of great assistance providers that can help. And one of the wonderful things that they offer is just consultation, right? So if your organization has those services, your employee can call them up totally confidentially and say, hey, I am traveling to um, Kenya. What are the rules there? What are the laws like there? What's the culture like there? What here's my situation? What do I need to do and what do I need to be aware of when I'm traveling there? Uh, so that would be one rec- one recommendation um, that I have. Patrick, anything to add for that? Sure. Through our consulting arm at Vito, we have these absolutely incredible diversity, equity, inclusion, um, I would say, maps and city guides that, that dive into the LGBTQIA plus community and certain precautions they may need to take as they go to certain cities or locations. And it really breaks it down in a super easy to understand uh way so that it's easy to digest and it lets you start asking those questions you know ahead of time of what do I need to prepare for that I may not have thought about and uh, really helps you get organized and I mean beyond just you know at Vito and BCD there's also amazing industry associations like the International LGBTQ AI plus uh, travel association IGLTA they have amazing information country by country um, that really break it down as well. So there's a wealth of resources out there for uh, travelers within the community and, and beyond. And to pick up on Patrick's point with Advito, um, uh, we have a traveler security program assessment, which on the organizational level will go in and look at your organization from a holistic risk perspective. Um, and that we, with that, we definitely look at LGBTQ plus risk. Um, and for all members of your diverse workforce. So I would highly recommend that as well. You know, one of my personal uh, goals in life is to remove the word leisure from our lexicon. <laughs> and so I'm going to try to use blended. Okay. Um, so with the uh, with the rise of, of blended travel, it seems to me that a whole bunch of other things arise when you're traveling with families or or friends or adding on vacation or whatever to business trips. What else does that kind of bring up in this space? Um, Start with you, Patrick. What are you thinking when you're thinking blended travel? Yeah, so I think uh, oftentimes when you're traveling in a blended environment, sometimes you're bringing your partner with you. And sometimes in the community that makes, 
your outedness a little bit more visible. And I think it comes back to what I was talking about. It comes down to the questions you ask yourself. Like, am I really comfortable with public displays of affection? Like, am I going to be holding my partner's hand? Um, you know, am I going to be displaying affection or ha- do I have adopted kids? And that's a whole nother uh, topic that we haven't like really delved into, but there's certain like security uh, elements that go into that and making sure not only yourself and your partner, but also your children are also safe um, for part members of the transgender community. Um, the United States has it on the gender where you can put the X gender identification. The transgender community has a whole nother level of uncertainty um, because that X, you know, gender marker is not recognized everywhere. And when they travel to countries where it's not recognized, they're going to potentially have challenges of even entry into the country. So their their travel may not even be able to occur. So uh, I think there's a lot and you know, let's be real, who doesn't like blended travel? I mean, there's benefits of being able to travel for work. And I think it comes down to of how do I make that as seamless as possible for myself, my partner, potentially any kids that a traveler may have. And it's making sure you're educated, um, you know, at your planning, but also when you're uh, on the trip. Yeah. And I have to, one other point to make, um, carrying on from what Patrick said is that, you know, the passport thing is, is a big deal, you know, having that gender presentation matching what mm-hmm. it says. And, um, you know, if that's not your authentic self, that can be a problem for you. And that goes back to, you know, not saying you don't want to travel if, if it puts you in danger or it creates a situation where you're not able to be yourself. Um, the other thing is also with medication, you know, you go into a country mm, yeah. and you mm-hmm. may have specific medication that may identify you. Uh, and that's a consideration as well. And the legality of that medication uh, in some places, you know, and this is not just all LGBTQ, but across, you know, just sometimes mental health medication is, is, is illegal in certain countries. So traveling with medication, being sure that you can uh, carry it when you're traveling and that it's accessible. If, for instance, they lose your luggage, it's, just, it's in your packed luggage, you can get a refill that you can get that when you arrive at that location if you need to. Okay, last question for both of you. And Christine, I'll start with you. Um, When it comes to the individual traveler, what advice do you have on how to handle uncomfortable situations or trips? Kind of sum up everything uh, this episode has touched on. To me, that means no is a complete sentence. You having the power to say, no, I'm not comfortable traveling. No, I, I won't go on that trip. And not having to provide an explanation. And again, that goes back to creating that corporate culture of organizational safety. And so if you have that culture, your employees are going to feel empowered to say no when they really mean no. So I I think really starts off with before I go on my trip or really anyone as part of the community, I think it starts with you really need to do your research beforehand. You need to educate yourself on, you know, certain nuances that may be in the country reason region or city and uh, really make sure that you, you know, show up informed and empowered, Uh, make sure you have all the proper documentation that you may need. And then I think once you're on, you know, on your trip, I think it's really important to always be, you know, the most comfortable in your own skin and also weigh that with, you know, your security. And I think that's really important. Um, And I I think there's a lot of challenges and, you know, uniqueness that the LGBTQIA plus community faces. But I also think there's so much incredible things around the globe, uh, you know, that the community is part of. And so it's it's finding the balance between the two of them so that you're really comfortable. And then the last piece of it is, is I, I, I do think for corporations, as you, you know, look at the LGBTQIA plus community, it's maybe understanding that not everyone is super comfortable with being out in the workplace and kind of going back to making sure that you understand that what Christine said, no means no. And it may be a reason that is, you know, unspoken, but it's still listening to that and fostering a culture where that's okay. And then the last thing that I'll I'll, I'll kind of end with is, is again, I think the best employee you have is the one that is the most comfortable in their own skin and anything you can do as a corporation as an ally or someone that's traveling with someone as part of the community is making them feel comfortable listening to their thoughts, their concerns, or their celebration. (music) 
As a strong ally for this community, I'm glad we were able to have this conversation and dig into some aspects of business travel as it relates to the LGBTQIA plus community. Yeah. Um, as someone who has unfortunately experienced some of the situations we discussed today, working at a company like BCD that embraces the culture of openness and care for its travelers is, is comforting. And I like that uh, that translates to all of our customers, clients and everyone listening as well. Uh, and this conversation was so important. Well, that's all for this episode, everyone. Happy Pride. And we'll catch you on the next episode of Connections. Thank you for connecting with us. BCD Travel helps companies travel smart and achieve more. We drive program adoption, cost savings, and talent retention through digital experiences that simplify business travel. Learn more about the topics you heard on this episode by visiting bcdtravel.com slash podcast.